Hello and welcome to another edition of Beyond the Real. My name is Alex and today we'll be talking about Logan Lucky. So, Logan Lucky is directed by David Soderborough. Okay, I can't pronounce his name and I'm sorry, but uh, most people will recognize him from such films as Oceans 11, 12, and 13, as well as Magic Mike. And of course, uh, I believe this was supposed to be his return to making movies because he wanted to take a break or he retired. Uh, I forget which one it was, but this was his first step back into filmmaking at the time. So um, originally when I saw the film, I saw it when it released uh, on home video and I really wanted to watch it in theaters. But by the time I finished watching it, I was okay with me not catching it in theaters. So the reason I say that is because to me, this doesn't really film, this really doesn't feel like uh, the typical like big budget movie that I would typically watch in a theater because this feels more like in a, like an artistic indie film more so than, you know, a typical uh, higher end film. And, you know, one of the problems I had with the film was the fact that throughout the film there are these really weird cuts and I'm not sure if they only did that because uh, sometimes uh, characters will be going, will be having these long uh, conversations and you know they kind of want to pick up the pace so they kind of like cut frames out and then you know just to get the, the action moving like a little bit and I don't know if that was a stylistic choice or if that's just how he, um, that's just how they wanted the film to be but for me I I noticed it and while it's not something that happens a lot it's something that was really noticeable to me and I did not enjoy that and also there are like some really weird shots uh, like there'll be a wide shot or like I feel that sometimes a shot will linger on a certain character or a certain thing for just a tad too long but other than that um, that's really all the bad things I had to say. So the main plot of this film is basically these two, uh, the Logan brothers, these two brothers uh, plan a heist during the a NASCAR event, the Coca-Cola 600, and they're just trying to get money because uh, Channing Tatum's character, um, he's a single father who loses his job and he doesn't quite see eye to eye with his ex-wife and he's just trying to get money so he can, you know, get uh, not control of his daughter but so he won't lose uh, visitation with his daughter and since he loses his job he needs money to hire a lawyer as he says and that was his reasoning for doing the heist but by the time the film's over like I don't feel that you know everything that they set up like to for the emotional weight that they set up was enough to really justify like everything that happened but that's just me and also I feel there are some things in the plan that just have to come down to coincidence or things happening a certain way just in order for this plan to work which is another thing I didn't really enjoy but for the most part other than that I really enjoyed the film uh, this film has a great cast and I would compare it to a film such as 1917 where um, you know you mainly focus on the characters of Adam Driver and uh, Channing Tatum as the Logan brothers and uh, like everyone else will have like a smaller role but there will be like uh, other big name actors or well-known actors and they'll have a small part but the fact that they mix so well with our main cast that they don't really um, take the spotlight away. So Channing Tatum in this film has really great chemistry with everyone and you know I was really surprised to see him in this role because I haven't seen a lot of his films but I'm used to him being like a, a silly more of a silly comedic actor uh, of course because I mainly know him from the Jump Street movies but you know seeing him take on a more serious role that I know he has done before but just the way that he played the character and like having this seriousness having this goofiness but also being real mature because of uh, you know what's happening with his daughter and also um, there are times where he is a bit immature but uh, the fact that he had that 
balance to him. You know, I really enjoy it. Which that could come down to Channing Tatum himself, or it could just come to the way his character was written and the story. But I guess uh, that's as you watch the film, you know, you can come to that conclusion. And uh, touching up on that point that I made earlier, uh, he has really good chemistry with literally everyone. Uh, Adam Driver, you know, I really bought that relationship that he had. Uh, the relationship he had with his daughter, I really bought. Uh, Katie Holmes plays his ex-wife, and I could. I could buy their their relationship uh, from that first scene where we see them interact with each other where he has to go pick up his daughter and she tells him that they have to talk about legal stuff and you know he gets a little upset and she's real tense so you know I could really buy that relationship that the story has set it up to be as well as uh, his interactions with Katherine Watterson who is also a great actress who didn't really have a big role but you know they also played and had great chemistry together. And of course, um, I think probably my favorite character in the film was probably Joe Bang, played by Daniel Craig, because I never expected him, I never expected to see him like this because, you know, most people, or because some people like myself, you know, are used to seeing him like in a more serious, um, action-based uh, roles uh, such as the James Bond films or a film like Defiance and seeing him in this film really you know changed my perspective on uh, how good of an actor Daniel Craig really is because uh, uh, he plays this veteran like criminal who's about to get out of the slamma and of course you know he has a southern accent they did a really good job in making him look really big and he's also has such good comedic timing in the film that you know I was like man I wish Daniel Craig made more films like this because he's actually pretty funny and of course not to pass upon Adam Driver but he is also very good in the film uh, it, though it took me a while to get used to the accent he used in the film but I thought that I thought that you know his accent was believable and uh, you know he plays uh, a veteran who lost his uh, I forget what he he corrects people in the film multiple times about how they about how he didn't lose his arm he only lost his forearm and his hand and you know there are times where that effect looked a little weird but for the most part you know he, he played it very well and you know he I'm I could believe that he didn't that he was really missing that that he really had a prosthetic a prosthetic arm and also another great surprise in the film was also Seth MacFarlane who still this being my second viewing you know I still kind of kind of have to like really look at because he he plays a, a spot like a energy drink sponsor guy who uh, is basically like a jerk but the way he talks and the fact that he's wearing like this wig and he's got this big mustache like it's still I still have to really be like it really takes a while for that to process for me to say like well that's Seth MacFarlane but I also enjoyed his character because he was very immersed in that role so the heist to me was believable to a certain extent I really enjoyed that whole aspect even though we really don't get to see it until really late in the film but the planning the execution you know I enjoyed watching all that and also Oh, and this film also has uh, some great uh, John Denver in it as well. So if you're a John Denver fan, uh, you know, I hope you enjoy that aspect as well. And also, um, of course, you know, spoiler free, but um, I feel there are things in the film that you see that you kind of wonder why it's there, but it's not till the end where, you know, they, they come back to those scenes. And I feel that adds a lot of rewatchability because there are certain things that they explain throughout the, that they show you throughout the film that aren't explained till later so I like that aspect that you know it adds some rewatchability because this being my second viewing you know uh, there are things that I caught this time around that I didn't even think of the first time so uh, I think this film is very rewatchable and it's a lot of fun uh, I wouldn't say it's funny I'd say it's more humorous because it's not like a film that is just constant jokes that are funny because it it wasn't to me but 
there are a few times where you do chuckle so um logan lucky i would i i think i'd recommend you watch it you know i think it's 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 pretty fun it's it's a simple film and um however i would say it's one of those that i recommend you watch but i wouldn't say this is something that you have to watch like like right now it's just one of those things that you can watch whenever you want to because while i did enjoy it it's not for everyone some people might find it pretty slow some people might not even like it at all so you know watch this uh, on your on your own agenda and of course um let me know what you thought of it uh, i don't know if you will enjoy it as much as i did but i hope you do and um i guess i'll just wrap up the video here so thanks for watching uh leave a comment if you can uh like this video please uh that'll help us out a lot and of course uh don't be a stranger come back for more and we'll talk to you soon bye